Another tutorial that is actually requested also quite often is how to do some basic lab wares. We are going to start with something very simple. So we are going to do a beaker and a test tube. Uh, do glasswares that you often find in the lab and that can be used as some kind of decoration for your projects or also use as like a vessel where you put your molecule in, for example. So what to expect from that tutorial? I'm going to show you a, a very simple way on how to do those two glasswares. And we are also going to learn how to load objects from another Blender file that we already created into uh, your current Blender file. In that case, I'm going to load one of our molecules that we loaded before into that file, going to put it inside of the beaker. And of course, you can do that with whatever object you would like to have. So I started up a new scene now and um, it's a very basic scene. So you see we have the camera here. We have the cube, the default cube. We have the lamp. I'm going to leave the camera and the lamp as they are. I'm going to delete the default cube because we are going to add another object that we are going to use for modeling our beaker first. I'm just going to quickly turn on screencast. So on that side, again, you see what kind of keys I'm using. And I'm going to go into the camera view. Good. So we have not done any kind of modeling until now, but I'm going to show you step by step how to turn a basic shape that is already available in Blender into something also to be honest, quite basic, like a beaker. The basic shape for uh, the beaker is going to be a cylinder. So we are going to add a mesh and there is uh, a cylinder available. And this is the one we are going to use. So you see, this is the basic resolution or the default resolution of the cylinder, but I would like to have it a bit smoother already. That means the smoother it is from the beginning on, um, the nicer, the glass material is going to appear in the end and the more details we are going to have. If you add an um, object, then there is also a tiny menu appearing over here in the left corner. And if you enlarge that, you see that here we can do some kind of modifications to the uh, object that we loaded already. Make sure that you do that kind of modifications directly after loading, because otherwise the window is going to disappear. We are not going to change anything about the size yet, but we are going to change something about the resolution, basically. So instead of having 32 vertices, I'm going to actually have four times uh, that amount. So you see now that actually already the outside is quite smooth and this is something we can work with nicely. All the other settings are going to stay as they are, so we are going to keep the default setting. When this is done, you can just click away and you see the, the window there is basically gone. Good. Now, for the first time, we are also going to enter a new mode that we did not enter until now. Until now, we only worked in the object mode that's visible over here. This is uh, the window that shows you what current mode you are in. And here you see we are in the object mode. Clicking here, you see there are a couple of different modes and we are going to go into the edit mode. Those are the two modes that are uh, used quite often. So we are going to switch between edit mode and object mode. You can either use that menu to do that or you can just hit tab and then you are going to automatically switch into the edit mode. If you do so, you see that your menu on that side over there changed. So there are a couple of things available now that we are going to use. But to be honest, most of those things are not going to be used since the beaker is a very um, simple object to create. Um, it's not overly complicated and we are not going to use uh, all of those tools that are available. One thing that we have to do is we need to um, make a finer resolution for our beaker to modify. That means in that case, you see that there are only sections that are um, vertical, but we would like to have horizontal cuts as well. And there is a quite nice tool to do that. Um, and this is the one we are going to use now. To make it a bit easier for you to see, I'm going to enter the front view, which, is, uh, which I do by pressing one on the numpad. And then I'm going to use a tool which is called loop cut. 
and I'm going to just click on the middle of the cylinder. So what happens now is that Blender is actually cutting our, our sections in half and by just increasing the number over there, you see we are getting more and more of those loop cuts and they are automatically aligned nicely. I'm going to go up to 20 loop cuts. That should be totally enough and that's fine. So as soon as you entered uh, the number you would like to have, you can click somewhere or use the selection tool again. Then of course, um, we would like to get rid of the top layer there because, well, the bottom one should stay. So this is the bottom of, of our beaker, but the top one should be open, of course. In the edit mode, you have three different ways on how to select things. I'm going to zoom in to make it easier for you to see. The first thing is you can select vertices. That means you select basically the dots. The second thing is by switching here, you can select an edge. That means you just select the line. And the third thing is you can select a face, which is basically a complete area. So it can be that face, but it also could be a smaller one here. We would like to select the top face over here because this is the one that we would like to delete. So select it and then just hit X, which is the command for deleting something and then just delete faces. And now you see that the barrel is basically open. We see the inside and this is the basic shape for our beaker. So what we need to form now is basically the spout. So the, the object where you basically pour the liquid in a controlled way. For that, we are going to enter the top view just to see uh, or to make it easier for us to select uh, one part of the beaker. I'm going to use the edge select now and I'm just going to select one edge on the corner, which is this one. So you see the white uh, highlighted area there is the edge that I selected. You only need to select one. It basically doesn't matter which one you select. It just needs to be the top one. If you selected that one, we are going to switch to the move um, command. So that means the three axes that we are used to seeing appear. And then we are just going to move that edge uh, to the outside of the beaker. But of course, what you see now that looks very rough and not really like uh, you would expect it to look. But the good thing is, so I'm going to go back. The good thing is there is a command that allows you to do proportional editing. And this is that one. So if you activate proportional editing, there, is a, there are a couple of falloffs. Uh, we are going to stay with the smooth one because that's exactly what we would like to have. So keep that uh, activated. And if you do the same thing now, you see that there is a large circle appearing and the neighboring uh, vertices are affected in a smooth way. So you see now that this is actually uh, not that, like the, the uh, modifi modification is not that sharp. It's actually very smooth. Keep your mouse pressed and at the same time scroll down with your mouse wheel. Then you see the circle actually decreases and uh, that also means that the area that affects uh, the vertices, so the neighboring area, gets smaller and smaller. And now you see we can form actually a very nice sprout here. And this is already something that I would actually use and work with. If you would like to incorporate some details, because normally the sprouts are a bit um, lower at the front, uh, you can do that, of course, as well. So this is what I'm going to work with. It might take you a bit of training and a bit of getting used to uh, the clicking, the dragging and using the mouse wheel. So take your time with that and try to do it as controlled as possible. You, if it's easier for you, you can do that first in the top view and then you can switch to the front view to see how far you actually track that one vertice. Good. This is everything that we have to do in the edit mode. So we can leave the edit mode now. You can do that by switching uh, here or you can hit tab and we are in object mode again. So the next thing that we need to do to our beaker is to give it some kind of body. Glass has a certain thickness and now of course our beaker is way too thin. Uh, that's not how glass looks like. 
So this is also something that is super easy to do because there is a modifier for that. We also did not touch modifiers yet, but this is the first introduction to using your first modifier. Modifiers can be accessed in that menu with the tiny wrench over there. So if you click it, you can open a list of different modifiers. We are mainly going to use modifiers that are in the generate list. And the one that we are going to use now is a solidify modifier. If I click that one, and if you look very closely now, you see actually that our glass has a thickness. You can change that thickness uh, by just changing the number over there. I'm going to make it twice as large as it is here. And um, of course, you can change that afterwards if it's too thin uh, for you or if you would like to have a stronger glass. Uh, you can do that at any point. It is important to know that you don't need to apply the modifier. It's actually a good idea to not do that because then you can change your um, object afterwards. I'm also going to show you some, um, some examples where it's actually necessary to apply the modifier. For the solidify modifier, it's not necessary. So we can keep it as it is here. What we see now is that actually our picker uh, looks already quite nice. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to set up the scene so I can enter the rendered mode. That means I'm going to add um, a plane, just something that catches my shadow again. I'm going to make that a bit larger. So I'm just going to try to hit the perfect point approximately. It's a bit difficult to see, but this is also some fine tuning we can do in the end. So if I enter the rendered mode now, this is what the scene looks like. Now we did not change uh, the rendering engine to cycles. We were still in EV. I'm going to go to cycles again because this is where the material setup is going to be done as well. So this is what our basic scenes look like. So let's just try and give that uh, beaker already its own material. And here we are going to use the glass shader for that. Um, keep in mind, I'm also going to um, open the preview tab that the default settings for the glass shader is actually um, containing a roughness. Of course, we would like to have a totally uh, transparent glass. So we are going to turn the roughness down. So what you see now is it looks actually quite nice already, but of course it's not smooth. So you see there are, it's even better visible if I go back in solid mode, you see that there are a couple of um, edges visible and also that our cylinder is not totally smooth. That can be changed quite easily. If you just click right on your object and select the shade smooth, then your picker looks totally different now. There are a couple of still rough edges here, but we are going to um, solve that a bit later. If I go into the rendered mode now again, you see it looks smoother, but there is a very ugly dark edge at the top of the, the beaker, which is basically caused by how the edge is calculated. And that's something we are going to correct as well. So I'm going to go back into solid. To have a nicer looking edge and to get the, that uh, edge a bit smoother, we are going to apply another modifier on top of the modifier that we already have. So the solidify modifier stays as it is. And we are going to add a bevel modifier. A bevel modifier basically allows you to have smooth edges. So this is the one with, that we are going to apply. And it is placed underneath the uh, solidify modifier. I'm going to collapse that menu where the solidify modifier is so that you have a nicer view um, on the um, bevel modifier. There are two modifications that you uh, need to do. I'm going to up the segments to five. The higher the number of segments is, the smoother and the nicer the edge is going to look. And I'm going to change the limit mode instead of none, I'm going to change it to angle. And now you see that actually the edge of the beaker looks already quite smooth. There are a couple of rough edges here, but that's something we are going to solve in a minute. And now let's zoom out again. And if I enter the rendered mode, you see that now it looks way better. So there is still a bit of a dark edge here, but this is also something that you would have with a natural glass. So there should be something darker. And we could even smooth that out um, even more. I'm going to show you how to do that. But this is already a quite nice looking beaker. 
One way on how to get rid of those darker areas would be just to have a finer mesh. And this is something that you can also do with a modifier. And this is also the way that I would recommend it. Since I said modifiers are reversible, it's always a good idea to use a modifier for those kind of things. The modifier that we are going to use now is called a subdivision surface or shortly it's known for subsurf modifier. Um, if you click that one, it might take a couple of seconds for it to actually appear or to be applied to the object. Since we already have two modifiers, the modifier on top of them might take a couple of seconds to be calculated. So give your computer some time. And now you see this is what the final outcome actually looks like. So if I zoom in a bit, you see that the dark, there is still a bit of a dark rim here, but the very dark uh, areas there are gone. So if I remove the modifier, you see the areas are still there. And if I add it again, then they are gone, basically. So the subsurface modifier actually does a very good job. Good. So that would be our beaker. Uh, of course, you can modify the beaker afterwards as well. So let's say, for example, uh, you would like to have a higher one um, or a smaller one or a, a, like... Um, more something like um, a dish for crystallization or anything. So you can modify the, the basic overall shape as well. That can be done. So let's say I would like to have a, a higher one in that case. In this uh, scenario, I would enter the edit mode again and I'm going to go into the front view again by typing one uh, on the numpad. What we would like to do now is just make the beaker a bit higher. So I'm going to use uh, the selection tool, the box selection tool and select uh, a part of the lower area of the beaker. Just make sure that you don't select anything from that area because otherwise you would distort your beaker somehow. Um, it's a bit unfortunate because if I just use the standard selection tool, only the faces in this case that are facing me are selected. Everything that's behind is not selected. But this can be solved very easily. There is a function which is called toggle x-ray. And if you activate this one, you see that now all the faces are transparent, basically. And if I do the same box selection again, you see that everything in the same layer, basically, or in, in, in the same area is selected. And if I would like to have a larger beaker now, what I'm going to do is just grabbing basically the selected area and dragging it down. Make sure to deselect the proportional editing because that's not necessary now. Like this. And don't worry about that area over here. If there are no loop cuts, that's totally fine. We just needed the loop cuts to get a smooth transition in that area. If, if it's just a straight line, basically, it's fine. You don't need to add any loop cuts here. Good, so this is my beaker. I'm going to go back into the edit mode into my camera view and then I'm just going to move down my uh, plane because uh, now of course the beaker was cutting the plane in half and I can also deactivate the toggle x-ray function so that I get the uh, non-transparent version of my um, settings. Good, so let's see how that looks like in the rendered mode. So that would be our beaker now. I'm going to do some tiny changes concerning the light. I'm going to go from uh, the standard light source, which is a point light to a sun. And I'm going to change the amount of emission to three to make it a bit lighter. Um, you see that the shadow over there is actually quite strong and quite dark. You can change that by changing the color of your world, basically, of the background. So for that, you just go into the world properties and make it a bit lighter. That also makes the shadow a bit lighter. Uh, in addition to that, I would like to have a shadow that is not uh, that long. So I'm going to change the position of my light. And I'm uh, going to reset all the rotation values to zero. And then I'm just going to grab the, um, the Y axis and do a bit of rotation. In this case, it's approximately 12% so that I get a, a smaller uh, shadow over there. Good. So now 
you could of course also fill your pika with something. I'm going to show you quickly how you would fill it with um, something like water or any kind of fluid. And then I'm going to show you uh, how to put the molecule in there in addition, the molecule that we prepared before. To fill the beaker with a solid, we are going to use a very, very simple technique to do that. We are going to add another uh, cylinder. So shift A to open the uh, add menu, go to mesh and just click on cylinder again. Now the cylinder is positioned at the same place where our uh, beaker is. If your beaker is in the center of the coordinate system, which is perfect because this is where our liquid should be as well. Uh, the only thing is the beaker is a bit high, so I'm going to grab the blue key, hit S, scale it down a bit and just move it down a bit. The only thing now is that the size of our liquid is basically the same as the beaker is. But of course our glass should be thicker um, than or should not have the same or the beaker should not have the same radius as the liquid because of course then it would shine through. And this is exactly what we are seeing here if we press render. It's not overly obvious. But uh, if you look very close, you actually see that the edge is over there. There is a very simple solution to that. You can either decrease the size of the liquid of the cylinder inside, or we can go back into our uh, modify uh, menu of the beaker and go to the solidify. In, instead of having a positive value at the, for the thickness, we can just add a minus there. So what happens now is that the wall basically is going, it's getting thicker towards the outside. So you don't fill on the inside, but you rather fill on the outside. Again, since we have quite uh, some modifiers that are here, those tiny changes might take some time. Uh, but you see now it actually changed and the inside radius of the beaker has now exactly the same radius as our cylinder has. And this is exactly what we would like to have. If I go back into the rendered mode, we see now that the inside is perf perfectly filled with the cylinder, how the liquid basically would fill the cylinder or the beaker. There is one mod modification that we are going to do now uh, because the cylinder on the inside, which is the liquid that we have, uh, is not like it should, like the liquid would behave. Um, to show that, I'm going to first of all uh, change the name of our beaker so that it's easier to modify. Then I'm going to hide the beaker so that we can do modifications on our liquid. And one thing that is visible is that the outside of the liquid is not smooth. That can be changed as in the same way as we did before with uh, the beaker. Right click, say smooth shading, then the shading is smooth. But now you see that actually the, there are no uh, sharp corners anymore. And this can be corrected also quite easily with a modifier. And there we are going to select the edge split modifier. And if we do that, we see the sharp corners again and the smooth outside. And this is exactly what we would like to have. Then, of course, there, uh, there is like an extra point um, that I'm going to show you because it also teaches you how to use a new modifier. But this is something that is really, again, a fine tuning. If you are fine with your liquid as it is now, you can skip the next step. To make it easier, I'm going to delete the edge split modifier before I go there. And I'm also going to go back to the flat shading because then it's uh, less intensive on the calculation and it's easier to see what's happening. So what you normally have if you have liquid in a beaker is that the surface of your liquid is not totally straight. So it's normally like a U shape and on the edges the uh, water or it depends on the liquid of course is going up a bit. And this is something that we would like to have as well. And um, we are going to do that with a modifier that basically cuts um, our uh, cylinder here so that we have a like a a, a groove basically in that cylinder and for that we are going to need to, to create another object and I'm going to use an, an icosphere for that. The icospheres are something that you've seen before in the tutorial for, um, for the molecule as well. I'm going to increase the subdivision up to 5 so that it gets smoother. That also might take a couple of seconds to be applied. 
And that smooth ball is going to serve now as our template to cut um, our um, cylinder. And in this case, of course, uh, a groove like this would be, or a, a tint, tilt like this would be way too uh, strong. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to grab the, the blue axis and I'm going to scale the ball down to something more like an eclipse. Uh, I think I can even, even go further. And then I make it uh, a bit larger and I'm going to position, I'm going to go into that view, position it so that the edges are actually completely covered by our squished ball. Then you select your cylinder, you go to the modifier tab again, and there is a modifier which is called Boolean modifier. And that's the one that we are going to select. What that modifier does is it can cut or uh, combine or make the difference. Yeah, that would be cutting. So basically you have three options. You can have an intersection. So if two objects overlap, you can get the intersection of that overlap. You can have a union, so an, a combination of both objects, or you can have one object cutting the other objects, which would be difference. And that's the one that we are going to use. Our selected object is the one that's going to be cut. Then now we need to select the object that uh, is cutting our cylinder. And the easiest way to do that is just by clicking on the eyedropper tool here and just selecting um, the cylinder, uh, the, sorry, the squished uh, ball. And the Boolean modifier is one of the modifiers where it's essential to use the apply function. So if this is done, it seemingly looks like nothing happened. But if you click apply and if you delete your uh, ball in the end, you see that now actually we have a, a tiny um, groove or a tiny tint in our cylinder. And that's exactly what we wanted to have for the water. So now you can go back to add the smooth shading. And I would also recommend having the edge split again, because then you have a sharp edge over there. Good. What of course is also necessary is that our liquid on the inside should have some kind of material as well. I'm going to go for the glass shader there as well. I'm going to make it a bit derbit. So I'm going to keep uh, something like 0.1 of the, oops, for the roughness. And I'm going to give it a, a bit of color. So I'm making it like a bluish liquid on the inside. And if I go to the rendered mode and add um, the beaker again so that it's visible. This is basically our setup now. So you have the beaker and you have whatever fluid you would like to have on the inside. Perfect. So what I would like to have now is the molecule basically sitting half covered on the inside of our beaker. And this is something that we can achieve quite easily. Um, to do that, I'm going to add a new collection to our list now so that everything that is uh, related with our molecule is basically in that one collection. Um, that makes handling a bit easier because you are going to see that we need to import quite a lot of parts of the molecule. As you recognized yesterday, it consists of all the single parts like um, the atoms and the bonds and so on and so forth. There is something that's quite convenient in Blender, which is something I hinted before. If you would like to switch objects between Blender files, you can uh, easily import that from one file to the other. You can also do that actually with material and so on. The command for that is found in the file menu and then you go to append. So it's not import, but it's append. And if you click append, you just need to navigate to the file where your, um, your molecule is. So if I go back again, for example, that's the histidine uh, molecule that I created before. So I'm going to open that. Then I go into the object submenu. And there you see a list of all the objects that basically make up the molecule. In addition to that, you have the camera, you have the light and also the plane where the molecule sits on. So everything basically that's in your scene. I'm going to select now everything that belongs to the molecule and I'm going to leave out the plane, the light and the camera. And then I'm just going to click a bend and there it is. So our molecule is inside of our scene now. It's a bit large because it has the orientation that it had before in the, in the previous Blender file or in the, in the other Blender file. So what I'm going to do now is just I'm going to scale it down and I'm going, oops, I'm going to 
position it in a way that it actually sits somewhat on the inside of our beaker. So it's still too large. And I'm going to move it down so half of it is basically covered by the liquid. And if I go into the rendered mode now, you see that our, li our molecule is now sitting uh, in the liquid and half of it is covered and you also have the refraction uh, that you would have in water basically. Uh, of course you can change that, so this is something that we already learned in the uh, first tutorial, but I think actually that looks, uh, looks quite nice here. Good. What I'm going to change quickly is just uh, the shading of the um, carbon atoms because I think that actually that actually looks a bit weird. So I'm going to give it a, a less because it would be like um, um, something transparent in the liquid, but I would like to have it uh, stand out a bit more. So I'm going to go for a simple diffuse shader or probably I'm going to go for the principal shader and I'm going to give it uh, a darker gray color and also I'm going to decrease the surface roughness. So now this is how it looks like. And uh, I'm going to give that a test rendering now with the standard settings that are there. I'm just going to activate the denoise uh, option again, something we also talked at the very beginning. And I'm also going to increase the number of samples in that case. So I'm going to use 256 samples. This is, that's always recommended whenever you have something uh, transparent like uh, any kind of liquid. It actually needs a bit more samples to have a, a, a nice clear um, image in the end. Good, then I'm going to render that image and I'm going to see you later when the rendering is finished. So we are back and this is what the final image looks like. I think it looks actually pretty good. I am quite happy with the outcome. Probably the refraction of the water is a bit too strong, so I'm going to turn that down and um, we are going to render that again. So let's first change that, otherwise I'm going to forget to do that. So this is now, as I said before, at the standard setting, which is 1.45 and I'm probably going to go down to 1.2. Let's see how that looks. I think that looks a bit better. It's not that strong. So I think I'm going to keep it at that. So in the second part of this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do the test tube, which is actually um, even easier than the beaker for that. I'm going to move everything that um, is part of the beaker uh, a bit to the right so that we have some space left for our glass approvet. If you would like to select um, a lot of things that contain tiny parts at the same time, it's always a good idea to use the box selection tool as well. You can do that by just clicking here or you just uh, hit B. I'm going to use that option. Unfortunately, now you see also our plane is affected as well. There is a function as well how you can easily stop objects from being selected. This can be highlighted or activated in that, uh, by using the tiny icon over there with the funnel. So if you click on that, just click on the arrow and also on the uh, tiny camera over there. That's something that we might need in the future. So I always keep those things activated. And then I just click on the arrow where the plane is and then my plane is not selectable anymore. So it, I cannot select it by accident, for example. I'm just going to move the beaker to the side so that the center of our coordinate system is nicely visible again because we are going to form all of our objects again in the center of the coordinate system because that's the easiest to do. Then you can also collapse uh, the menu with the molecule in it because this is sometimes very distracting since there are a lot of objects in there and then we are going to start again. Modeling the test tube this is actually super easy to do. The first thing we are going to add is a, um, 
a UV sphere. And we are going to just do one tiny modification. And this is the number of the segments and the rings. Make sure that the number of the segments is an odd one. So I'm first of all, I'm going to um, make it a bit larger to have a finer model again. So it's the same as we did with the beaker. I'm going to double the number of segments here. And then I'm going to just add one more segment. So make 65 out of it. I'm going to show you later why you need an odd number of segments. For the rings, it's not that important, but I'm also going to double the number of, of rings to have a smooth surface in the end. Then we are going to go into the front view by hitting one. I'm going to close this menu. And what we are going to do now is we are going to select half of our sphere in the edit mode. So we hit tap again and we are going to do the same thing as we did before. Make sure that, that the x-ray uh, function is activated. Then deselect everything by just hitting alt and A. Then everything is gone. And I'm just going to use the box select tool again to select half of our sphere. And now you also see why it was important basically to have an Uh, odd number of um, segments here. If you selected half of the uh, sphere now, you just click X again and uh, say delete vertices. This is the reason why we had an odd number of vertices, or it's basically you're able to cut it, cut it directly in half. If we would have an even number, then that would be a bit tricky. If you select the upper uh, part now, so just the upper ring, Make sure that you are still in the X-ray um, version. Oops, sorry. And just pull that up. You see now that we are forming our test tube. It's a quite large one, but we are going to scale it down later on. So I'm going to make something like this. And this is basically now the shape of our test tube. And I'm going to scale it down again. position it. I'm going to actually keep the position in the middle of our coordinate system because then it's easier to fill the, uh, the liquid in. So this is what the shape looks like. Then of course you can use the smooth um, shading and we are going to do exactly the same as we had for our beaker. So if you would like to just copy the modifications that we did in the modifier tab, um, you can go ahead and do that. I'm just going to do that quickly. So I'm going to add the um, solidify modifier and the bevel modifier. So first the uh, solidify. I'm going to use the same numbers as I had before. And now I'm already going to use the negative number. So I think it was 002 for the thickness. Of course, we scaled it down, so it might be that we actually, yeah, for sure, we need we need a higher number here. So I think we can go with four. And then I'm also going to use the bevel. Let's zoom in to see how that looks. That looks actually nice. And a higher number of segments. Five looks good. And let's see how that looks like in the rendered version. Of course, now that one is floating. So I'm going to bring that down. That looks good. And I'm going to actually give it the same material as for the beaker. I'm going to name that material glass. Select our test tube and also select that material. We had a third modifier here as well, which was the subdivision modifier. I'm also going to add it to the test tube because you see there are also the dark areas here as well. Keep in mind again, it might take a couple of seconds for that modifier to be active. So give your computer a bit of time. I think it still does not sit nicely on top. Great. I'm going to go back into the solid mode. 
and I'm going to go to the top view because what we are now going to do is we are also going to fill our test tube with um, a liquid. In this case, a bit, it's a bit more tricky because now, of course, the bottom of the test tube has a, uh, a shape as well. So what we are going to do now is we are just, just going to duplicate that object here by just hitting shift D and clicking. Then it just stays at the same place where it was. Then we are going to enter the edit mode and I'm just going to bring that down. So I'm going to do the opposite as we did before. Leave the edit mode. Then I'm going to get rid of my solidify modifier because that one would be the one that gives us the, the, the thickness uh, to the outside. I don't want that anymore because it just should fill the inside. And there is now one modification that we have to do actually because th that's something um, that's different to the beaker. Since our uh, basic object was already opened at the beginning, so I'm going to show that to you quickly if I hide that uh, the outer test tube now, which is unfortunately now in the collection where our uh, molecules are. So I'm just going to make a new collection and I'm going to move those two things Then it's easier to do. So that's the outer one. I'm going to hide it so that you see the inner one. And the problem is quite obvious. We don't have a cover on top of it. So it's basically just a mini version of the, the test tube. So this is something we need to change. And for that, we are going to go into the uh, edit mode again. And when you're in edit mode, we are going to select uh, just the rim of our object here. That can be done also quite easily. Make sure that you have the edge select enabled, then click somewhere and just hit Alt and click again. And then all of the edges that are connected are going to be selected and then just hit F. And you see that that face is going to be filled. So F is the command to fill a face. And that's exactly what we would like to have. Now, of course, um, the bevel op uh, modifier is also applied to that object because we duplicated our um, test tube. So we are going to delete that one. So uh, the subsurface is also activated. We are going to delete that as well. And we are going to use the edge split. So exactly the same thing that we had done with the um, liquid that is in the beaker previously. Of course, what you could do now as well is also cut the liquid again to have like the, uh, the right shape. I'm going to leave it like this. If you want to do that, you do it exactly the same as you, we had before with the beaker. Then I'm going to uh, highlight uh, the test tube. Now, of course, we also have to give um, the water the right color because now it's still colored like glass. So I'm going to use the same material as I had for the beaker. That is water. And then let's see how that actually looks like. And this is how it looks like. I'm a bit unhappy with the way the, the rim actually looks like. So I'm going to go back into that again because I've, it seems like we need to do some kind of tweaking uh, here as well concerning the modifiers. So it looks like the bevel modifier probably needs a bit of modifications. I'm going to crank up the value of the profile a bit more then you see the rim is a bit uh, flatter. So let's see how that looks like. And that actually looks way better now. So I'm going to leave it like this. Of course, what you can do as well is you just duplicate those. And then you basically unlink uh, the liquid that's or the, the color of the liquid or the material of the liquid. And then you can use different colors for the different uh, types of liquids that are on the inside. Of course, you can change the height of the liquid exactly as we did before. When we decreased it, you can also make it higher again. And that would basically be a nice assortment of uh, tiny test tube that are filled with any kind of liquid you would like to have. Of course, you can add again a molecule or any other type of um, decoration that you would like to. I'm going to arrange all of those things now in the middle and then I'm going to do a final render. 
So let's see how that looks like in the end. First, I'm also just quickly going to set up a bit of a background. So that we have a corner over there. And that would be basically it. I'm also going to reposition the lamp a bit. Or the sun in that case. So that we have a bit more lighting in the corner. Perfect. So the shadow goes back there. Nice. And let's see how that looks like for the final rendering. I'm going to come back again when the rendering is finished. And my rendering is finished again and this is the final outcome. I'm going to do a bonus part for that tutorial now as well, where we are going to quickly model a, a rack for the test tubes. So something like, not that old fashioned as it is shown here, but something more modern and um, but quite similar to, to what you see here. And then we are going to do some extra settings for the camera as well, because there is some cool features that I want to show you there as well. And that uh, also helps you to make your scene look a bit more realistic. Good. So uh, I'm going to give you some time now with um, your uh, glassware so you can play around with that a bit and if you want we are going to see each other in the next short tutorial the bonus one for this one which is the rack for the test tubes and also the composition of the overall seal good see you later